Hey, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel as we discuss the very exciting minor grand trine occurring between this Uranus in Gemini, Neptune in Aries, Pluto in Aquarius. This energy begins August 2025. Now, this is their first connection at one degree. See how each is at one degree Gemini here? one degree Aries, one degree Aquarius. This one degree meeting point occurs mid-August to mid-September 2025. Then these three outer planets meet up two more times. So for a total of three times, they meet up again at four degrees in July 2026 and again at six degrees, June 2027, August 2025, July 2026, June 2027. I'll put the exact dates below this video. Then they also interact on and off within a few degrees until 2029. So basically there is three times that these outer planets meet up and they are helping us form and create new experiences, new realities on this planet. The outer planets are associated with collective consciousness, universal energies, what the planet is moving through, how we are shifting and evolving and where we're going with it. So here we have a minor grand trine, also called a talent triangle pointed at this Neptune at one degree of Aries. Yes, Saturn is here. I'm going to have a separate video for you discussing Saturn and Neptune conjunct. In this video, I'm focusing on the three outer planets and how they are focused on Neptune at Neptune in Aries is the focal point, but it's also like this is the next renaissance. This is the rebirth. This is renewal. This is a very fast moving, accelerated energy of dynamic change and possibilities that takes us into the new experiences on the planet that we're creating as this new cycle begins. So what we will be moving through involves our ability to create what we want based on where we're at. Of course, this is different for every single person on the planet, but collectively there's going to be an emergence of new technologies. Now we're already in it. I'm recording this video in August, 2023, and we already have seen this Pluto dip its toe into Aquarius for a few months. But in the second half of the decade, the energies become more alive, more real. And there's going to be more that shows up in our daily reality. And that is part of Uranus in Gemini, shaking up our daily experiences. New forms of communication, messages, transactions. There's a busyness, a quickness here with Uranus in Gemini. Gemini is ruled by Mercury and Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. And this Uranus does well in Gemini and this Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So there's going to be a lot of dynamic fast moving energies here. I also feel this wildly spinning in the third eye chakra. There can be a lot here that even feels destabilizing because it's so fast moving. I also think that this Uranus in Gemini is accelerating 
unscattering energies as well. There can be the desire here to do things very quickly, short-term gratification. There can be a sense here that too much is happening too quickly. It's, it's hard to grasp it. This directly affects our everyday needs. Transportation, technology, interactions. This Uranus feels very important because of its significance in Gemini, but of how it's interacting with this Pluto and how they're both working with Neptune. Neptune typically slows down a process. And so for all the ways there's a lot going on, moving about, happening in the world at large, the Neptune in Aries is going to slow it down and ask you to breathe in, breathe out. What is true for you? What is real in your energy? What fits with your path and your direction? And the Neptune energy, it can lack clarity in the mind. So this is a very heavy mental focus in the air signs of Gemini and Aquarius. And this is about trusting what feels correct for you. I feel this energy as the, the root chakra. And I feel this Aquarius as also third eye. And as I said, this, this Gemini can be third eye, but it also can be throat chakra. So there's a lot of activations circling and, and circulating into our energy fields that we're going to have to really find a way to ground in because this could feel ungrounded. This could feel like here we are levitating. Maybe that's some of our new transportation technology. We're all just moving around now on our, on our hoverboards, our skateboards that are flying, of course, cars that are flying. Um, this, this is a real focus on air, energies. This is also bringing us to new parts of ourselves that we want to experience in a whole new way. There's a lot of innovation. Um, it can also sound crazy, absurd, off the wall, wacky. And Pluto in Aquarius, which we've been talking about for a while now, is going to be moving through the Aquarian energies to destroy, dismantle, and ultimately transform, but will be crashing down systems. So social media, mainstream media, the news, uh, the internet, collective technologies, all of that is going to be undergoing a lot that affects our daily experiences and our communications. This is the, the digi digitally transforming our lives, digitizing information. And everything that goes along with that. I mean, there's the low end of that, everything being tracked, all the information about how we live our lives, being online, being within technology. It's, it's almost like, what is freedom, which Aquarius energy values? What is freedom if everything is being tracked. So this is where we have new ethical questions and dilemmas around information, how information is being used. Reminds me back in the day when grocery stores and other stores started their loyalty programs. 
which tracked what you were buying so that they could market it to you and advertise it back to you. Now it's not just about our groceries and what we buy being tracked. It's all of our life, every way we live our life. And where that information is going, where it has been, what we give permission for, what we rebel against, what we say no, I do not consent. I don't want all of my health care and medical documents accessible by anyone who wants to look at them. I don't want how I spend my money to be tracked. I don't want everything on my phone available and accessible. So we're going to have some very big things coming up with technology, information, how it is streamlined. But because this is a trine, and because it's working with Neptune, there are things we aren't going to know. Neptune hides. Neptune dissolves. Neptune removes. And so we're moving into very new territory here. What does it mean to be a sovereign individual within these control systems? What does that even mean? Is there sovereignty? Pluto is bringing that up as it moves through Aquarius. Sovereignty versus collective control. The ability to remain your own individual person. The, it's, it's almost like, is it possible to live offline? There's your flash of light for dramatic effect. What do you put online? What do you share? Everything on the internet is permanent forever. That was not part of our education. Gemini is education. Gemini is what we're learning. Information that we take in and then teach. That's part of the, the double or the duality of Gemini. First you learn something, it goes into your brain, and then you're able to discuss it and speak about it. You've learned it, right? So this accelerates and brings up how, how do we learn? So this affects education systems, schools, anywhere that has collective energies is what Pluto in Aquarius is working with. And this Gemini energy brings it home. Our local environments are shifting and changing. New ways of connecting with each other that isn't only online, that isn't only through the internet or the apps or social media. We need to basically look at our local environments what we value, what we want in those spaces. This is your local businesses in Gemini. Your local coffee shop, restaurants, bars, stores, collective spaces. I hope they're being revitalized. This could be promising for all those you know, malls and brick and mortar and places that were shut down. There could be some beautiful new ideas for using those spaces in our local communities. And they don't all have to turn into Amazon warehouse distribution places. You know, this is where we've got to look at what do I want in my community? What fits for my lifestyle? What best serves where we're at and what we need? So this is going to basically bring up some beautiful new innovation energies. The last time that Uranus trined Pluto was in the 1920s. Every hundred years, or with the last hundred years, this hasn't happened for the last hundred years. I shouldn't say every hundred years because I don't know if it's going to happen again in the next hundred years. I haven't looked that far yet. But understand, this energy hasn't happened since the 1920s. And what do we need now? Like, this is about our... our 
how we live our life. But in the 1920s, this didn't happen in Aquarius and Gemini. This is where we are really understanding what is essential in our daily environments, local, as I said, and I'm, I'm hoping this helps uh, small towns and environments that have been really hit by the energies that we've experienced, especially with Pluto in Capricorn. I'm also feeling like this is going to open up more people to their own soul communications, like coming online with your own creative spark and gifts and living from that energy, living from that space, even though there could be a lack of certainty. This Neptune in Aries is, is going to ask you to continually check in. Is this correct for me? Is this what I want? Is this where I'm at in my journey? And if so, then you're going to be inspired to make something happen. I'm just feeling a very strong energy around sovereignty. What does that mean right now? What does it mean to be an individual? And is that possible? If everything is networked, if everything is basically either online, tracked, recorded, you know your phone is showing everywhere you're at, amongst other things. So I think we have some big questions. And I know that we, we want to connect with the empowering energy of Pluto, but when Pluto first enters a sign, it's often a disempowerment. So radical insights here are gonna be coming up. And we're gonna be looking at where we need limitations with technology, with AI, you know, what, what is happening off planet and how that's affecting us um, and our energy systems. Since we're not the only beings on this planet, we haven't been the only ones for decades. And the astrology is pointing to this Neptune in Aries. And remember how this is called a, a talent, a talent triangle and a minor grand trine focused on Neptune in Aries, which is that the individual, the individual might not feel that it matters or could feel overwhelmed by everything unfolding and going on, but it's actually within the individual's spiritual power that we rise, that we grow, that we elevate, that we trust. To not lose your sovereignty amongst these mass changes, to not be overwhelmed by them um, because this Neptune and Aries can give up and say, this is too much. I don't know what to do. I'm just one person. But the universe is saying, but you're one full person. And it's by working with other full and complete individuals that we figure out and we have these new ways of experiencing ourselves and we create some new realities on this planet. Now, the Aries energy can have a lot of inspirations, a lot of things it wants to move towards or do. 
And in Neptune, it means it's, it's probably not going to last long. It's short bursts that can show you more of what resonates with you, what you want. And in this chart, yes, Saturn is here. But Saturn is only here for the beginning of this configuration. Remember, these three outer planets meet up a total of three times. Saturn is here for the beginning of it, to ground it in, reality check, slow it down, make sure you're clear. Saturn also represents the 3D. Neptune is the 5D. And I feel that as Saturn moves forward, it can feel like there's more of a split between the 3D matrix reality and the 5D new earth consciousness. This could be with this Neptune focal point here. I'm getting the image of uh, floating through everything going on, like feeling like you live more in another timeline, another frequency, feeling like there's things that you're no longer connected to while there's things that you're more fully connected to as well. And this is an ongoing process because, as I said, they start at one degrees, then they meet up again at four degrees, each planet at four degrees, then each planet at six degrees. And then they make ongoing connections, but they're not exact. So there's things that are going to be forming and, and, and being tested. Meaning there's things like just, I'll try this and see how this fits, see how this works. Then that will change into something else. And then that will change into something else. Flexibility, adaptability, being able to move with changes as they happen. Those will be strengths. Staying open to multiple things at once multiple realities as well, and confusion. Confusion, what is going on? What is happening? What do I trust? What is correct for me? Neptune is gonna be asking those bigger questions as well. In the next video in this series, I'm gonna talk more specifically about this Uranus in Gemini trining Pluto in Aquarius. So that will be coming up next. And then I'll also have a separate video for you with the Saturn-Neptune conjunction. But I wanna focus on the bigger energies because we're, we're playing with some new colors here. We got a whole new box of markers. And these are colors we, we haven't played with yet, especially in this lifetime. And it's going to be asking each of us in our own individual ways to pay attention to where this energy is showing up in your chart. So that can be an exercise you do where you identify where you have early degrees of Gemini, early degrees of Aries, early degrees of Aquarius, and those three areas of your chart is more specifically where this is showing up for you. So here in this example chart, you can see that, okay, Pluto's in the fourth, Neptune's in the fifth, Uranus is in the eighth. So you would identify those eight houses in your chart to see what is going to be connecting for you. And by the way, this is, this is positive. <laughs> this is like... Okay, new energies, new starts, new creations. This is very creative energy. It also relates to language. 
We're going to evolve from, from using emojis into something else. Scratches will just be ruins. Vikings had ruins. I'm kidding, but really, we're gonna have some new communications Telepathy. Did you know I was going to say that? If you knew I was going to say that, then you're online. New telepathy, new ways of talking to each other energetically. There's a whole lot of responsibility that comes with that. Let's be honest. There's some people we don't want to be telepathically communicating with. So there's, there's going to be a lot coming forth and birthing. This is masculine energy. It's motivational energy. It's rare. It's powerful. I know I'm repeating myself, but we'll keep talking about this. So here is your heads up on what is coming in the second half of the decade. And please join me in the other videos I'll be releasing as we break this down even more. As always, thank you for your comments, your likes, your subscribes. Thanks for sharing this with others who know how awesome astrology is and how astrology shows us the way. Is a beautiful cosmic weather system that gives us the heads up on the sunny days, on the storms, on the big energies, on the quiet days. And this is overall powerful new beginnings, incorporating more solutions, technology, innovations, communications. Our minds are going to be really active, perhaps too active. There can be mental fatigue. But there's also going to be energies that we are consciously choosing and trusting as well. Thanks for being here. I'll be back soon with another video as we dive deeper into the second half of this decade.